Hi, Graham Park from Shooters Union here. Guns, crime and politics. That seems to have been the last week we've had. And uh, what a week it, it was. Not one we probably many of us like in some ways, although there were some good points thrown in. Um, first up, the uh, horrible events in, in Christchurch and massacre by some deluded extremist over there who killed a whole lot of people. Uh, and, and imagine attacking people at prayer. I mean, what sort of person does that sort of thing, regardless of which side of politics they're on? I think we all condemn uh, that sort of violence and any, any of this extremist nonsense that goes around the world from all sides of politics. Who cares if it's left, right, or at the middle? You know, it's just nasty and it's not called for in a civil society. Um, something we should all reject. Anyway, uh, unfortunately, it, it, uh, those sort of crimes lead to political outcomes and everything else. And in New Zealand, we very quickly saw the anti-gun brigade, both in Australia, um, lecturing New Zealand almost with a, with a finger about, see, we told you your laws were bad, and, which I just think was obnoxious and arrogant. And then we had the homegrown New Zealand anti-gun people finally jumping up to uh, take their uh, shot at um, <laughs> um, uh, their, their um, time at, at having a go at uh, gun laws in general. The thing about New Zealand gun laws, when you hear all the stuff in the media you want to understand is this. Over a 30 plus year period, New Zealanders, both from government, police, and from the shooting public, work together to come up with a set of laws that in some ways are actually stricter than Australia, in some ways not as strict. Um, but they were laws that fit their country in their circumstance and were laws that everyone agreed pretty much to live with. Very unlike Australia, where we had laws imposed on us by uh, John Howard and the Liberal National Coalition and all the anti-gunners back in 96 without any consultation and everything. And regardless of the details of those laws, what happened is it left a really bad taste in a lot of people's mouth. It caused the formation of different groups, including Shooters Union, and it caused the formation of different political parties, including ones like One Nation or Shooters, Fishers and Farmers. And we only have to look to last weekend in New South Wales to see that 96 is still reverberating. And this is the downside of what happens when you rush laws through and you don't work with all the stakeholders. You don't make participatory democracy. You have this top down, you will do this because we're the government type attitude. And sadly, um, at the moment, New Zealand also seems to have fallen for that. It's not our place to comment on New Zealand's laws. They have their laws uh, and they can change them as, as New Zealanders see fit. But it is sad to see the Prime Minister of New Zealand, the government of New Zealand, um, treating uh, a huge proportion, hundreds of thousands of New Zealanders, perhaps 25, 30% of New Zealanders as potential criminals, instead of as allies in working together to have effective solutions. And that's really about all I want to say on that at the moment. And I hope and wish them uh, a really better outcome than what we're seeing at least early days in the press, that they get together and work it out because my contacts within all the shooting groups over there is that they want to work together. They want positive outcomes that protect both the public and um, the uh, shooters as well. And that's pretty much what we want here in Australia and pretty much what I see from groups like Shooters, Fishers and Farmers. And despite all the outrageous nonsense in the media in the past week, where they have jumped up and down about guns and we had um, a lady from a woman from uh, Gun Control Australia talking about banning military type lever actions. Well, here's news. As far as I'm aware, the only military type lever action was an 1895 uh, uh, Winchester, um, which was adopted in small numbers by the Russian army. Uh, no one before or since has adopted them as an official military arm, to my mind. They're simply, they're, those military lever actions don't exist and military style bolt actions. Well, considering no, one, no one's made one in about 70 years, um, that's pretty amazing as well. I mean, just ludicrous stuff that these people come out with. They, they literally 
almost dance in the blood of victims of, of a massacre anywhere in the world to make their point. And yet they totally ignore the fact that it's in some ways harder to get a gun license in New Zealand than, than in Australia. They ignore the fact it is a very regulated market. Uh, they ignore the fact that the week before the massacre in New Zealand, there was a, a massive uh, massacre in Nigeria of 100 and some people um, in a country that literally ba outright bans uh, private ownership of firearms. And with a few days after the crisis, when there was there was one in, in uh, Holland, which is more restrictive than here or New Zealand. And yet we're not talking about that. Why? Because the guns aren't the issue. It's, it's pretty blunt, you know, the guy was crazy. And in his so-called manifesto, he talks about why he chose to use a firearm. And he says he chose to use a firearm specifically because it would generate more media than using a truck or a bomb or anything else. And he lists all the different methods that he considered, many of which may have killed more people even, and who knows, and, but, he chose firearms because A, more media, B, for division in society. So he could divide as the government's immediately pushed for more gun control, it would cause more division in society, especially in the United States where guns are, a, are very much a political issue. And guess what? <clears throat> the politicians and the media decided they would follow exactly what his manifesto wanted, beyond me. I mean, I would have thought that was the reason why you would have sat down and talked things out rationally uh, to work through. The gun was not the issue. Um, and I think many, many of you watching this or experienced firearm users realize that pretty much any type of firearm could be used with horrible intent. And uh, in fact, <clears throat> Australia's second largest mass shooting, which was actually from the ni early 1960s, I believe in South Australia, was committed with a single shot bolt action 22. The type of firearm, don't buy into this whole thing about the types of firearms and, and everything. Oh, it's okay because it's an under and over shotgun or it's okay because it's this, oh, but it's not okay because it's, it's this type or that. Really, it's the nut behind the trigger and we've got to do all we can to keep that away from people. But that's where the, the guns, crime and politics all sadly uh, come together. On another interesting note, and, and on a little nicer note, is New South Wales. Over the weekend, New South Wales had its uh, state election, and uh, the coalition government there was returned. And in fact, uh, the Liberal part of the coalition in the cities did quite well. <coughs> Labor did quite well. The National Party in the bush, normally a very safe thing, lost seats. There are now three Shooters, Fishers and Farmers uh, Party members in the lower house. And, <coughs> excuse me, if you look at a, a map of New South Wales, an electoral map of New South Wales, literally more than half the geographic area of New South Wales is now represented by Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party. Um, so I'd suggest that the major parties may just want to take note, not just of Shooters, but of, of people in general who are fed up with the major parties talking down to them, not listening to them, and they want a little democracy in, in, in their lives. And, and I've got to congratulate them. And in the upper house, um, also Shoes, Fish and Farmers got a seat. And it looks like the Liberal Democrats of David Lionhelm will get a seat. And, and there's also some good, solid, common sense independence in New South Wales got, got seats. So this is a positive. And by the way, this is after a week that included all the extremist anti-gun noise after Christchurch, all the ads run by the Liberal National Parties in New South Wales, including rolling John Howard out of retirement to run around and, and, and bleak that, you know, shooters and fishers were going to arm kiddies or something ridiculous. Um, their policies are very, very mild. All they want is, is a fair go, really, which is why people in the regions are electing them. Um, so congratulations to them and to Independence and hopefully to uh, uh, David Lionhelm as well. Now, we've got a federal election coming up in about uh, six or eight weeks. And we really need to look at that. 
you own a farm, you want to keep owning that farm, you really need to look at this. Federal go government doesn't pass most of the laws on this stuff, but we need to get out there and support people that support us and not just go blindly supporting the same parties we always have. If you want to make sure they get in there, put them as your second or third preference or however you want to run it, but don't put them first. But what actions can you take other than on voting day, obviously? Well, here's some. You can, yeah, you can write letters to your politician, letters, um, but why not call up and make an appointment, go see your local politician, introduce yourself. Hey, I'm Joe Smith. I'm this, I'm down at the local gun club or I've got a property out on such and such road and you know I use a firearm for feral animal control and in my work every day or however, whatever it is, I'm a collector, whatever it is, or I'm a police officer and I carry a firearm every day, you know, how are you to the politician and let them know a little about you. And you know what they're seeing? They're seeming normal every day. People like themselves own and use firearms responsibly, just like over a million Australian adults do every day. It's a very normal situation. And you need to get them to meet you. Say hi, how are you? Be polite, be friendly, um, invite them to the range. Invite more friends to the range. Uh, people who haven't shot, take them out shooting. You know, um, have a good time, enjoy it, show it's enjoyable. And here's one big thing. When you're online and many of you are online and you see these comments and some of them really are from irritating people, anti-gunners, don't respond by being vile and nasty. That really doesn't help our cause. That's what they expect. You know, their vision is the angry white male that owns a gun. You know, that's, that's their rhetoric on the, on the uh, extreme anti-gunner side. So just be nice, be polite. Tell them you disagree with them, why you disagree with them. Leave out the swear words. Certainly on our uh, Facebook and Twitter and stuff, we will delete anything with something that obnoxious in there. But just be polite, but get your point across. I don't mean wimpy, but I just mean, you know, let's treat each other with a little dignity. I think especially this week, it's, it's nice to treat each other with a little dignity and be polite. And going forward, just remember, if you want a better Australia, not just on gun laws, but in general, you got to be really looking forward to who you vote for and who you support. But get out and support them. Offer to show up on polling day and hand out how to vote cards for people you support. Offer to, to do whatever it is, you know, go to pre-polling places with them. Offering help is a really great way. We like people to offer to help us. And what it also does, doesn't matter if they get elected, they don't get elected. You know what, it's more people seeing that shooters are great people because the shooters I know around Australia really are great people. They welcome you at ranges. They welcome you here. They're, it's a fantastic bunch of people that it's it's a really I'm proud and Shooters Union is proud to know and be part of the Australian shooting community. And I think all of us, um, even though sometimes we can get a little irritated, it's it's you know it's up to us to lift the tone of the argument a little. Have an absolutely great one and. Uh, Talk to you soon.